we'll see Cam Newton and the New England Patriots taking on Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy, as it'll be the AFC champion, New England Patriots, taking on the NFC champions, the Dallas Cowboys. Brandon Garden alongside my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, we'll start by taking a look at the Patriots. You know, they did it again, their 12th Super Bowl appearance ever. That's a record. They were able to rebound from the wild card loss to the Titans last year. And a lot of folks at the time said, that's the end of the Patriots dynasty. Apparently, they were wrong. Look, they just find a way to get it done each and every year. So anyone who wants to count them out, you're almost always wrong. They're trying to make it four wins in seven years in the Super Bowl. That rivals the Steelers in the 1970s. But when you think about this Patriots franchise, we're talking about the 2000s, 2010s, and now we're in the 2020s, and they're still rolling along. Meanwhile, the Cowboys have had some ups and downs since their last Super Bowl appearance, but they're back for the ninth time, trying to win number six and tie the Patriots and Steelers. For the Cowboys, their last Super Bowl title quite a while ago, January of 96. And those were great teams. Jimmy Johnson was their head coach. Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, all Hall of Famers. They were known as the triplets. But then you go further back to those great teams in the 70s, led by Hall of Fame coach Tom Landry, Roger Stahl back at quarterback, Tony Dorsett at running back. Those were great teams as well. This one, trying to create their own identity. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Oh, the ball is out. Michelle lost it. And the Cowboys have recovered. Now Dak Prescott leading the way onto the field. His fifth year now as a starter as he gets the keys again to this Dallas Cowboys offense. You hear so many discussions about Dak Prescott. Is he one of the top quarterbacks in the league? Is he still ascending? What does he need to do to get there? All I know is that when he's in control of the Dallas offense, they were number one in the league last year in terms of yards per play. And he was second in the league in passing yards with over 4,900. This guy gets it done, and his team really likes him as their leader. Now the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. At the Patriots, 48-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. This to Jarwin. The reception good for seven. It's third down. To Blake Jarwin. It's a gain of seven. Makes it third and four. Prescott from the gun on third. And this is going to be incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. line on for the field goal. A 58-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he hit a 62-yarder that hit the crossbar and went over this one a little bit inside of that, but not enough leg. And the difference is what? Well, your live conditions. Live conditions, game right conditions are a whole lot different than practice. We just pop it up there, no rush, no pressure. I think maybe that takes a couple yards away from you when you have to do it when it's real. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. And a good gain here of 9 from the 19 down to the 10. In that quarterback, his pass complete to Mohamed Sanu. A gain of nine. Ball resting on the 10 yard line. It's second and one. yard line. Newton now to throw. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Heavy set out there on third and one. They'll try and run for it. Here's Michelle. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. 
They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. From the eight, they've got it first and goal. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Trying to pound it in here with Michelle. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. A good pick up there, seven yards, and it's going to be second and goal now. And he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. With the first touchdown of this Super Bowl, and the Pats have taken the early lead. And on the grandest of stages, with the whole world watching the Super Bowl, they come out and get the first points. I don't know how you feel about Brandon, but for me, watching the beginning of the Super Bowl, I've often wondered how come it's not just a fumble fest? How come the ball's not all over the place? The nerves, the interim in between of the two weeks waiting for the game. But this team came out and handled it just like it was a regular season walk in the park. Terrific start. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Cowboys take over first and 10 at their own 20. For the Dallas Cowboys, Charles, boy, they have been nothing if not entertaining in 2020. Some wild games early. Another one in week three at Seattle. The bottom line, they fall to one and two on the year after a 38-31 defeat at the hands of the Seahawks. But Dak Prescott continues to throw the ball all over the yard, make it 922 yards passing in the last two weeks. The 450 against the Falcons in that come from behind win. He threw another 472 against the Seahawks. Just the second guy to throw for over 450 in back-to-back -back games. The other was Jameis Winston. And can you believe he's putting up those kind of numbers because don't we think of Dallas as being led by Ezekiel Elliott in the running game? They've struggled to have consistency there, and the offensive line is not what it was a couple of seasons. some guys filling in for some injured players right now. So Dak, they're relying on his right arm. Fortunately for the Cowboys, this schedule that's been kind of wild in the beginning, it settles down a little bit. Three home games coming up to start the month of October. Cleveland, the Giants, and Arizona. They've got a chance to get right in those three games. On second down, Elliott. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard after the 43. Chase Winovich brought him down. A gain of a yard on the play. Brings up third and four. Prescott from the gun. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Prescott sacked. A loss of six yards. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. After one, down is on as the veteran Chris Jones to kick it away. Back deep for the Patriots, Gunnar Olszewski. Taken from just outside the 30. 31 yards on the punt there. And the Patriots take over. The Patriots take over first and 10. And the Patriots now back on the beam following the tough loss in Seattle in week two. They take care of business against the Raiders in week three. A 36-20 victory in Foxborough. And of course, the Patriot players and coaches playing with heavy hearts following the loss suffered by the family of James White, their running back. But Rex Burkhead filling in, had a career day, scored three touchdowns. Sony Michelle Charles also had 117 on the ground. So the Patriots as a team, they ran for 250. I think it was fitting that they did. Yeah, if you're going to honor your running back, James White, and his family, how about the running backs going to the front? Kept Cam Newton out of the running game in this one. Took a week where he didn't have to take any hits, so that was good for them. And three games now in, everyone who thought that the Patriots were just going to go away and they didn't have the same roster, forget it. They're this close to being 3-0. and And how about the coaching job they did against the tight end for the Raiders, Darren Waller, who was tearing up the league. And a fake here. Direct snap to the up man. And he will not make it. They stop him short of the first down. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool him. And Dallas, they'll take over in terrific field position. The first down here by Elliott. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Ezekiel Elliott. Bo Allen on. 
on the stop. He was brought down at the 45-yard line. A gain of two. Brings up second and oh, on second down. It's Elliott. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Ezekiel Elliott. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And Elliott trying to work his way forward, but it looks like he did not make it. Boy, a call like this, certainly tougher to make in a Super Bowl, but they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll run it with Elliott, and he's not going to get the first. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. Ezekiel Elliott not able to get it past the marker, and the Patriots' defense is going to take over on down. First and ten, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They begin with Michelle on the ground. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Uh, six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. So pick up of six. Brings up second and four. On the handoff, it's Michelle. Six yard line. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, where they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want the left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You got a chance to rumble. And this is caught. It's Edelman. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is in. Touchdown, New England. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Now this will make it into the end zone. Pollard elects to keep it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Getting sent to go again, we get a look at Amari Cooper as he heads back out there now. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. Eluding the pressure right. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. On third down, it's Prescott. Got an open man, the tight end, Jarwin. And he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. At their own. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And incomplete there, almost picked off. 
That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. Keeping it on the ground on first, Michelle. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So it's halftime here on Sports Club. When out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Tenth carry now for Elliott. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they've bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Prescott down. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So coming up empty here to start the third quarter. Already two scores down. Got to be careful. Yeah, I did notice, though, that the captain of the defense patted the quarterback on the helmet on his way out, pretty much letting him know. We know. Looking into the raindrops, and he muffs it. And this will pin him back deep. That's going to kick out of bounds right at about the seven-yard line. Offense marching back onto the field, and our focus shifts here to Sony Michelle. And he is inching closer to that 100-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. The Notre Dame man, Jalen Smith, able to get a hand in and knock it away. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. He's airing it out for Samu. And got his man complete. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Now Cam throwing quickly for Sanu out wide. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Throwing again is Newton. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. It's now second and ten. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. 
Back to the air, Newton on second down. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. Third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. And he will score! Touchdown, Patriots! 25 yards! And the Patriots add on to their lead. Well, they were backed up on third and goal, and when you saw him start to scramble, my thought process was he'll get what he can and maybe get out of bounds. But he got a little bit greedy there. And in this case, greed was good as he got into the end zone. Wasser now for the point after. And it is now 21 to nothing. So that drive goes eight plays. And the final piece to the puzzle was the Cam Newton touchdown run. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And they're going to mark that where it went out of bounds. So really good starting field position up past the 40-yard line. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 42. He'll hand it off to Elliott to begin the drive. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. Again, it's Elliott. Three yards on the pickup there, and they've got it back to third and ten. You know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go. And he goes down. It's a Patriot sack. Ooh, how about that, partner? His second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If he gets another one and everyone behaves nicely, we might just list those out for him. relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole... The Cowboys will go. Prescott. And this is going to be incomplete. Mike McCarthy took the gamble, didn't pay off. And the Patriots take over. They're going to have terrific field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Second and a yard. And it's Michelle once again. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. New England on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. Here it's third and two. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. 18 big yards on that one, and a New England first down. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball. You often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. On third down, Michelle. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. Thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. On fourth down, Newton. And this is incomplete. 
The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Cowboys defense is going to get them the football back. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule. But if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. An excellent way to start the drive there. 18 yards from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. Escapes the set. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. So they lost yardage and they declined the penalty. There's no logical reasoning to do that. I'm trying to go through this little Rolodex in, in this small brain of mine, and I'm coming up with nothing, partner. <laughs> I've got zip on that one. Take the yardage, right? Take the penalty. I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it either. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Prescott. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Josh Uche. Dak Prescott sacked. Now, now comes the Cowboys punter. A Super Bowl 55 down to the final two minutes. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards. And the Patriots will have great starting position as they take over first and 10. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Throwing here, Newton. And on the connection, this is Ryan Izzo complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And they'll employ the jumbo set now on second and one. At the 40 yard line. And that is incomplete. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. And it's third and short. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Here we go with Michelle. Oh, he's got some breathing room. There, it is. there he goes there it is. left side. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the numbers. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. The bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Tony Pollard on the return. The Cowboys take over first and 10 at their own 20. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. Those Super Bowl hopes that they had really dwindling now here in the fourth quarter. That NFC crown that they got two weeks ago seems like a distant memory as they have been outplayed tonight. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Michael Gallup, that's who he was looking for. And now it's second down. Second and ten. So after the incompletion, second and ten from the 22. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Prescott. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Chung. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Intercepted. The Patriots take over first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Now a first down carry. It's Michelle. And some room to roam now. 
And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. 34 yards there and a first down. Hey, we haven't been around the entire time football's been played, but we have studied our history, and there have been some great backs who've been accused of running out of bounds to protect themselves. Well, back in the day, many people didn't like that. But nowadays, take care of the football, show some intelligence, live to fight another down. Give him three on the game there, second and goal. Michelle on an island by himself in the backfield, second and goal. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time, but now it's third and goal. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. They're running it. It's Michelle, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. And it's a fake. They'll try and throw for it. This will be caught at about the five. And he will not make it to the goal line. It's his try for two is going to come up empty. But that's little consolation to this defense as they have been porous all game long. are able to recover. The onside kick. Recover. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Elliott. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. Eight yards on the pickup. Brings up second and two at the 36-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Mike 51, Mike 51. Check that out. Looking to throw, Prescott. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. C.D. Lamb is intended target, and it's third and short. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. One last shot now for Prescott. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. And it's another Super Bowl title for the New England Patriots. And when this moment comes, I think you look back at all the blood, sweat, and tears, the offseason, the workouts, training camp, week one, two, three, all building up now to say you're a Super Bowl champion. It's worth it. It certainly is, and rarely do we have a team that hoists the Lombardi Trophy that didn't have their share of bumps along the way, didn't have to face some adversity in the journey, and now they get to just enjoy it and revel in it. And all offseason, they'll be signing their autographs with Super Bowl champion underneath it.